Let's discuss the difference between the average value of a property and the instantaneous value of a property, and by which I mean, for example, the speed or the velocity formula. The formulas that you've learned so far, and virtually every formula that you'll learn in physics, is the formula for the average value of that property. So, you know, as an example, we've already talked about speed, and we've also talked about the velocity formula. Well, those formulas are the formula for the average value of that property. In other words, they don't really take into consideration what happened in between. So, for example, I might have a very large displacement, but it might be that the displacement happened only at the end of the time interval involved. And, for example, during the beginning portion of the time interval, I wasn't moving at all. Or, for example, if I were driving from Chicago to New York, Obviously, there will be times which I stop. I might even sleep overnight in a hotel. And so the total amount of time for my trip might not really be very representative of the motion or my average velocity. And obviously, every time I stop, that lowers my average velocity. Every time I go faster than that average, that raises my average value. So there are limitations to these formulas because they really are the formulas for the average um, value. And in most cases, many cases, the object may have either very rarely or only some of the time traveled with the velocity that was the average velocity. In many cases, though, we would actually rather have, if we could, we'd like to know what the instantaneous value. And the instantaneous value is, is very simply the value of that property at a particular instant in time or at a specific time. And so an excellent example is the speedometer of your car. You know, the speedometer of your car is extremely important to, know, to have in terms of knowing whether you're speeding or not. So if you're traveling down the road and you want to know if you're speeding, the average value of your, of your trip is really not as useful because every time you slow down, for example, if you come to a stoplight, well, that time you're not moving, that's going to lower your average velocity. So if you want to know whether you're speeding or not, your average velocity is not particularly useful. You really need to know at every instant in time how fast are you moving. Now, that brings up an, a pretty obvious question. How do you figure out how fast you're moving at a particular instant in time? Because at a particular instant in time, no time would pass. So when you think about calculating your velocity, how can you do it if no, no time has passed? So how do we measure it? How can you get the instantaneous value potentially using a formula which is really designed to give you the average value? And the reality is that you really cannot measure the instantaneous speed. In fact, it's, it's impossible to measure. Very important that you recognize the difference. I cannot measure directly the instantaneous speed because in order to calculate the speed, time has to pass but I want to know at a particular instant. So what we do instead is we approximate it. And that's exactly what your speedometer does. What your speedometer does is to measure the distance that you've traveled over a very small amount of time. And this is where this idea of an infinitesimally small amount of time. If I want a more accurate measurement of my instantaneous speed at any given time, then what I need to do is to take a very, very small time interval and then calc and figure out the distance and then divide the two. So this is what your car does. Your car essentially over a tenth or a hundredth of a second, it takes the distance that you traveled and divides it by the amount of time, that tenth or hundredth of a second, and that's pretty good. Now obviously you want your car to take very small times. You know, how small excuse me, how small is infinitesimal? Well it's you know, it really depends. I mean obviously as small as you possibly can. You know, realistically your car is not capable of measuring a billionth of a second. The clock in your car is not that good. Um, but it is able to measure very small time intervals and keep track of how fast you're going. Now, which of these two is, is really the better one of the, of the two? Well, in reality, there's no reason for one to be better than the other. You know, it really depends on the, the circumstance. If I wanted to know if I was speeding, I really want to know about the instantaneous speed. But if I want to know how long it's going to take me to travel to New York, I'd really be more interested in what my average speed is going to be. So it really depends on the situation. 
but I think probably the most important thing about this question of which one is better is that there are some conditions under which both values would be exactly the same and the question is what is that condition so you should really think about wonder what condition might the values be exactly the same and the reason why we want the values to be the same is because some of the instantaneous things that we might want to calculate are not simply the velocity but I might want to know the distance how far will I travel in a certain amount of time or how long will it take me to travel a certain distance and in that case I'm really looking for instantaneous values rather than average values so think about what condition would allow you to consider both values the average and the instantaneous to be the same